Hi everyone, welcome back to Useful Genetics. This is lecture 1M. We're going to talk about life cycles. We'll talk about first the simple cell cycle, and then we'll talk about plant and animal life cycles, both asexual cycles and sexual cycles. And this will serve as a sort of a preface to prepare us to talk about genetic variation in life cycles, which we'll do in the next video. So here's growth and reproduction of a cell. Basically, the cell starts out with one copy of each chromosome. It grows, and when it reaches a sufficient size that it's ready to reproduce, it replicates its DNA. So it's now got two copies of each chromosome, grows a bit more, and then divides with the um, asexual division that's called mitosis. You'll learn a lot more about mitosis in Module 7. Um, this division produces two identical daughter cells, just like the original cell. They've got the same three chromosomes. And these cells can then grow and divide. And this can go on, depending on the cell type, this can go on indefinitely. This is often represented as a cycle, as shown here. But this is, this is convenient. It's compact. It doesn't take up much space. But of course, in reality, this is a process that's occurring through time with the same events occurring again and again, producing more and more cells. Now, in asexual organisms, they're built on the same cell division process. We could start the simplest starting place to think about unicellular organisms, organisms that where when the cells divide, they come apart. This applies to most bacteria and to many different kinds of eukaryotes. Um, most algae, um, many pro of what we used to call protozoa, and things we now call protists. And this is exactly the same process I showed before, but the emphasis is on the fact that we are gradually generating more and more and more and more progeny cells. Essentially, the same process happens with multicellular organisms. The only difference is that the progeny cells, the daughter cells, stay together and differentiate into specialized tissues to make the mature multicellular organism. Many plants can reproduce asexually by simple cell division. Not many animals can. But um, the process is very simple. Basically, a, another simple cell division, mitosis, produces an asexual seed, which is genetically identical to the parent plant. And that seed then grows into the next generation of plant, which is genetically identical to the original plant. Some plants can reproduce instead of seeds by sending out runners, often called stolons, the botanical name. And these runners, because they are also generated by simple cell division, they are genetically identical to the parent plant as well. And so they grow into progeny plants identical to the parent. Now, this process doesn't apply in humans because we are obligately sexual. We can only reproduce sexually. If we don't have sex, we don't have any generations at all. So what about sexual reproducing organisms? Well, this applies both to plants and to animals and to many single-celled organisms as well. The basic process is that there are contributions from two parents. Each parent contributes one complete set of genes in either a pollen cell or an egg or sperm cell, and the other parent contributes an egg cell. And these two fuse together to produce the fertilized egg that grows into the next generation. Can be the egg develops into the seed, which grows into the next generation of plants. The fertilized eggs grow into the next generation of animals. The most important difference between these two processes is that the Gamete cells, the pollen or sperm and the eggs, are produced by a special cell division called meiosis. And you'll learn a great deal about meiosis in Module 7. And because of that, the fertilized eggs are not genetically identical to the parents. 
That means that the offspring, the plants or the bunnies, can have different combinations of the genetic properties of their parents. Different leaf patterns, different flower colors, different coat colors, for example, and many other things. So that's all I'm going to say about life cycles for now. Um, but this sets the stage for the next video, where we're going to talk about ploidy and recombination. I hope to see you there.